So my name is uh, Steve Bittner. Uh, I'm going to school at the University of Texas at Dallas. And I just finished up my internship, or I'm, I've got like a couple days left of my internship for my first summer here at SMART. I was sponsored by um, the Army's Training and Doctrine Analysis Center up in Fort Leavenworth. My mentor, uh, he set meetings up with people all over the organization, like, okay, this guy will know how to help you out, or you know, or if not, then we'll go talk to this guy, and if not, we'll talk to her, and if not, we'll talk. So I interviewed or went around and just kind of talked about my research and my, my research at school with uh, different people in the organization, tried to explain kind of what my area is, and uh, actually had finally my last meeting with someone about two weeks ago, and like seems like a perfect fit actually. So my advisor, my uh, PhD advisor, sent me an email. I, I had never heard of it obviously. I mean it's, it's, it's a fairly new program. Uh, my advisor had just sent me an email saying yeah, here's something you might want to look into and when I started looking into it you're kind of thinking, looking at the numbers, I was like what well, is going to be you know, a substantial amount more than my current assistantship. The impression that I got was they only kind of were, it, it was being sort of disseminated to the graduate students only. And then when I came here for the orientation last year, I realized most of the program is undergraduates, or certainly a, a very large portion is undergrad. And uh, I mean, I, I don't think any undergrads at my school had really heard of it, or not in the computer science department at least. If I had known about this whenever I got out of high school, years ago I uh, probably I probably would have tried for something like this directly I, I had to, I did time in the military to so that I could get my GI Bill to pay for my undergrad education but wouldn't have been necessary if I had known about this kind of pro, uh, program and and could have gotten it whether or not I would have gotten it. If you look at right now's economy it's just like and it, you know I, I just have so many friends who are getting laid off from their jobs in industry and I don't know anybody in the DOD that's getting laid off. I mean, it might, it's probably happening to some extent too, but, but definitely nothing like what you hear about in private industry right now. So it's just not so vulnerable. And uh, so that's obviously an appeal is that security of being in the DOD. And uh, just, just knowing that, you know, when you graduate, there's always this concern about if you can get a job. And so for a PhD student in particular, you know, you're trying to work on your dissertation and get everything together for your defense and it's sort of a stressful time. There's a lot going on and you just think if on top of that you're looking for a job and trying to do the next step at the same time, it just seems like it would just be a ton. And the idea, you know, when I first signed up for the program, I kind of thought of it as the, the crux of the program is I'm going to have to work for two years for the DOD. Uh, you know, that, I, that I've got to do this for two years. And uh, now the further I'm getting into it, the more it's just, it just makes sense. And I'm really happy, actually, that I've got a job, a guaranteed job for two years when I graduate. Uh, if I opt to stick around longer, then, then that'll be the case as well. During my internship this, this uh, summer, basically all the new employees that go work there, the, the director that's, that oversees all four of the areas, so the White Sands, Monterey, Fort Lee, and then Fort Leavenworth, he, he sees all the new employees and just sits down. So I went into his office, you know, it was like this half hour meeting where we were just going to sit and talk face to face and I was in there for almost two hours. We were just, I mean, just really friendly guy, real good guy, and the way he was just explaining everything was like, very much you know, we want to make you happy because if you're not happy you're not going to be doing what needs to be done and you know if you're not happy you're not happy and that means it, I, I really got the feeling that my you know happiness meant something to the organization as well and I sense that from all the other people I mean everybody there was glad to be at work I was offered a couple of other fellowships through the university uh, like I said my first two years I was already funded from the university and I was offered a couple of other fellowships through the university uh, and are, since I've been free to my advisor the whole time he obviously offered me a research assistantship with his grant money mm -hmm. so as far as the funding and being able to continue my education goes uh, it wouldn't have been a problem but those 
Um, stipends, of course, are much smaller um, than, than the one through the SMART program. So the higher stipends just allowed me to maybe make some decisions that I haven't been able to make, like in my personal life, uh, getting engaged to my fiance and, and ultimately getting married and actually being able to afford having a wedding and <laughs> these things that, you know, if you're scraping out extra 50 bucks a month, you can't exactly afford something like that. But being a part of the program where I can actually save like a normal person, you know, it's, it makes a difference. If you're a grad student, you know, you're still living that dirt poor student life. And uh, in the SMART program, it's like you don't have to sacrifice that being able to live like a normal person just to be a student. It's like you get to do both. The area I'm studying is uh, computational geometry, which is just uh, an area in computer algorithms. So it's uh, mostly a theoretical base, um, but it's application driven to an extent. There's you know, if someone, if there's a problem in the real world that requires some kind of a solution, and that solution may depend on geometry in some way. So, um, I mean, the, the areas that I work in, I guess I can talk about what the most fam famous problems in computational geometry are, but the problems that I've worked in have been um, more like proximity-based problems. Just like applying to a job, I mean, you just have to make sure that for some reason when they look at your application, they're going to say, wow, you know, some, something about this guy is different from the stack of, I don't know how many people applied this year, but I know last year they were saying it was quite a, like several thousand people applied to the thing and, and they only awarded 160 of the scholarships. So how do you make yourself not part of the thousand thousands of people that get rejected how do you get in that 160 and I think it's just standing out I mean just like applying to a grad school or applying to any other job you really just have to be different in some positive way <laughs> So I think if I could describe SMART in one word, I'd say opportunities, probably. So it, it presents different opportunities from where you're going to get, I think, in anything else that you do. So the internship and the post-graduation employment are things that I think deter some people from the program, but I think people should look at those as really good things. I mean, even if it's just a stepping stone for you and you're saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to school for, you know, you're an undergrad or say four years under the SMART program and you want to go work for four years, that's four years of really valuable uh, experience working for an organization that's pretty well known and pretty well, you know, put together. So I think it looks good. And for, from my standpoint, when I initially started going to school, like I've mentioned, this to try and become a, a college professor. and. Uh, the big thing that universities look for in, in the case of college professors is what can you do to bring more money to our school? Like who do you know? How, what kind of ties do you have in different organizations that will make it so you can bring in research funds to our university? And uh, the DOD is a huge source of funds. I mean so just getting into a job and working around some people and, and hobnobbing in the organization and with different different people in the DOD, and those are just different contacts, you can, you know, help everybody out. I mean, there's different, you can help out their organization by solving one of their geometric quandaries, and you can help yourself out by getting some of their money to do so, or, you know, or whatever it happens to be, but I, I think there's just a lot of opportunities with this program that you just don't really get anyplace else.